I'd like to move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, it's uh, event initial report concerning an heavy water leak during maintenance, uh, April 14, 2015, at the OPG Darlington Nuclear Generate Generation Station, as outlined in CMD 15M21. I understand that um, uh, Mr. Duncan is here to help us with this. You can you can still hear us, right? Uh, Brian Duncan, for the record, yes, Dr. Binder, we can hear you. Okay, Mr. Howden. Thank you, Berkeley Howden, for the record. I'm here with Francois Rinfrey, and we have uh, our inspection staff at site. Uh, the only thing we have to add is uh, we have now received the detailed report, which just came in this week. Uh, we haven't had a chance to go through it in in detail, but we've we've had a high level review. Um, we suggest that uh, Mr. Duncan gives you an overview of what uh, OPG is doing as a result of this, and then Mr. Francois Rinfray can uh, make some comments on what we've looked at so far. Okay, Mr. Duncan, the floor is yours. Brian Duncan, for the record. So as, as a result of this event, uh, as, as documented in the event report, uh, the, the key learnings, there were really two key learnings that came out of this. The first that uh, was that my staff were not adequately sensitive to working in proximity to equipment that was, in this case, providing them isolation to do the work. Uh, the second item that came out of our, our investigation was that there have been events similar to this at our sister station uh, last year and at other stations uh, within North America, and we had not adequately applied the lessons learned from those other events so that we could uh, incorporate that that uh, knowledge and uh, that experience into our own work uh, work practices going forward. So one of the things we did immediately following this event was uh, to stand our team down, uh, walk through what had happened, uh, walk through the fact that uh, while workers were working on one valve and very focused on, on the work they were doing, they were in fact bumping up against an isolating valve that was providing, uh, stopping the water flow. Uh, and, and although they had always done that work that way and had done it successfully in the past, that it wasn't acceptable to continue with that practice. It wasn't acceptable to, uh, to live with what we'd always done and that uh, we needed to be uh, more sensitive and more aware of proximity, body position, and just the simple mechanics of if you're working on this device, what else is around you and what do you have to do about it? So, so we started there. We started with that. We started with a review of all of the work that we had ongoing uh, with our supervisors, our maintenance and our operations supervision in the field to see if there were other work activities out there that had similar... Uh, uh, impingements, if you will, or, or similar uh, interferences from uh, just from the location, physical locations. Uh, we are continuing to do that as we plan work and as we schedule work into our uh, into our online and outage programs to to look in each and every instance to to ensure that our staff have considered uh, the situation that they'll they'll be working under and the equipment in the proximity. Uh, going forward, uh, as part of our investigation, there there are obviously some other actions we're going to take. We're going to use some dynamic learning activities, which essentially are we have mock-ups of, uh, of systems and components that we're going to retrain and refresh our staff through training on, where we're going to put them in situations where they have to make decisions, where they have to work on a device that's in a very cramped location, for example, or where there are other uh, pieces of equipment nearby. And they're going to have to look and recognize, wow, while working on this, I could hit that. What do I need to do with that? How do I need to protect it? How do I need to guard it? Uh, do I need to lock and block it? Do I need to do uh, some other uh, kind of protective means to carry on? Uh, we believe uh, those sorts of dynamic learning activities will help really, really deliver the message and get our folks thinking about uh, every possible permutation and combination that could exist while we maintain this plant and, and look forward to, uh, to seeing improved performance, improved recognition from those staff uh, as, as to as what kind of situations they could find themselves. Uh, the, other, the other area we're going after is to understand how this operating experience that has existed in the industry, why didn't we learn from this sooner? Uh, why did we not take that information from our sister station uh, and incorporate that into our work planning processes earlier? Uh, we, we believe, you know, we do an awful lot of work uh, around learning, uh, learning from our own mistakes and learning from others. And here's a case where we didn't uh, take those lessons to the fullest extent. We didn't take advantage of them as well as we could have or should have. And uh, we're going to look back and in fact, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at now is looking back over the last year to year and a half 
of, of uh, events around the industry and see if we have applied that learning uh, in each and every one of those cases as broadly as we should have. Um, so just for this particular incident, you attached uh, in your, um, I don't know if it's you or staff who attached those uh, photos, and maybe somebody should explain exactly what happened uh, when I'm looking at this diagram. Um, the photo and the diagram. Maybe somebody can explain exactly what happened. Okay, Francois Rinfer for the record, director of the Darlington Regulatory Program Division. I'm not sure if Darlington uh, management has this picture in hand, but it, it is attached to the EIR. That's the one we can look at. So basically, um, staff were, um, were working on the, 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 the valve on top of the picture, which is identified PV3. In order, in order to reach PV3 properly, one maintainer would have to stand somewhere over, around, over, or all around V1, V1, which is the valve on the lower part of the picture. And V1 uh, actually was the valve that would isolate the area to provide the, to provide safe environment for the workers that were working on V on PV3. Therefore, if you crack open V1 inadvertently. <coughs> Depending on the condition of PV3, water might come out of it. So why would water come out of it? If you turn to the second diagram on the next page, you see there's a D2O storage tank on the left, the one that's called the one, D2O storage tank. And between that and, uh, and PV3 is your, um, is your valve V1 that would normally be closed. V1 uh, looks, looks like a butterfly there with 33850-V1. That's the one that would provide it. So water was going to what was uh, was allowed then to flow through PV3, as V1 was inadvertently inadvertently cracked open. So that explains this uh, the notion that you have been brought to this table by uh, inadvertent operation, uh, risk evaluation of what happens while you're operating a component in proximity to another one that you can bump, you could bump it because you don't see that you're uh, as you as you're suited in plastic suit with an air hose, you don't necessarily see everything that you touch. And so that's the, the, the area of the work planning that, uh, that uh, needed to be reviewed. Just to understand, so somebody opened up the V1 and V3 was already open? PV3 was being, yes, PV3 was, was already being, uh, was on, under maintenance. So basically, okay. uh, authorized to be worked on uh, for, for its plan maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.